Yo, here we go, everybody. Uh, we're going to be going over the guillotine spotlight and buff. So I was thinking to myself, like, okay, right, uh, everything's all delayed. As long you know, recording on the laptop, and so editing on the laptop is, uh, is taking a long time in order to get videos made, which is a bit disappointing, but it is what it is. Keep calm, carry on. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be going between the um, the information in the game of guillotine and then going between what is in the buff note. So we'll get the champion up and ready. Uh, do bear in mind I am about to level up this champion to 565. But if you understand the reasons of my process is that level ups on at the moment and what I do is I rank up champions and I wait for a level up. And what I do is when I kind of feel like I might need these champions at some stage, I level them up. So I'm just maximizing my take home on the level up 22 hour event. That hopefully explains that for anybody curious is, why don't you level up the champion? And there's a good reason for that. Okay, right, buff information, buff stuff. Let's go and have a little bit of a, a look to see what's going on. I'm glad Kaban put in mechanics this time, because they didn't do it at Thor Ragnarok, and I was thinking, well, they didn't really showcase what had changed. We had to do that ourselves in the video. Guillotine revels in blood of her enemies, releasing her blood, thirsty, blah, 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 earning her attack, boosting soul charges, while recovering a percentage of her own HP for each percentage of damage dealt. It's kind of the same at the moment. Not inflicting enough bleeds for your liking, throw a heavy attack uh, into the mix to cast a bleed curse. That's new. On the unfortunate opponent, followed by a special attack, this will guarantee you a bleed with each hit. And if Guillotine is unshackled, oh, that's new, you can be sure no block can match her blade once enough soul charges have been acquired. Um... No, a cured. Activate your special three to inflict a debilitating degeneration debuff. Oh, it's, no, it's too late for me to kind of be saying big words. Lasting until all charges have been spent on your opponent has fallen. That's, I mean, that's good because that's like a bit different to how it was. How it was with this champion is that you kind of like build up the soul charges and then you throw an SP3 and then it's, that's in case you do like an exceptional amount of damage and that's like, that's really good and that's where a lot of damage comes from. Very synergy driven and all that stuff. This is different in that the champion is going to be putting in a large amount of degen depending on how you want to play the champion. Because the champion didn't really have much going on. Like you see the passives here for every six seconds, maximum health, guillotine removes uh, from the opponent during blah, 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 blah. It's, also, it just, it's very kind of low end. It's not much effort. A layer of armor provides additional armor rating. SP2, SP3, critical hit, where you lacerate and do a bleed for 4.5 seconds, which was bleeds were part of like, sort of part of it. And the awakening ability was that souls uh, of her ancestors grant 10% chance to steal uh, damage done as health so still keeping in with the health restoring narrative let's go back and see what kabam are planning to do so there's a bleed a bleed curse spectre in degeneration which i think spectre is already kind of like there's the sp2 am i being right or not with that um i think that was the spectre maybe that, that was something else we'll find out more about that now Right, uh, strengths, stacking bleeds, especially when heavy special combos can deal some serious damage over time, especially with high number of soul charges, build those soul charges. Buff heavy opponents, opponents who utilize many buffs at one, at one time will quickly realize their folly as guillotine's chance to inflict bleeds rises with each buff on the opponent. Handy against the likes of um, Odin, Venom, any cosmic. Let's just face it, there's any cosmic really, that's that's kind of the main thing with that. But maybe there's other areas as well. Let's skip down to signature ability as we did last time and just find out a little bit more. Cursed Aura. Whenever the opponent's immune to Guillotine's personal bleed effect, she has 100% chance to inflict a matching rupture debuff, causing physical damage. The rupture debuff grants one soul charge. Awakening her signature ability grants her effectiveness against a large pool of bleed immune opponents. And is incredibly important for a kit. Okay, um, that I'm impressed with, because the biggest problem I kind of foresaw with this is that maybe because the champion is doing bleeds, like well, what about bleeding immune champions? This means that, and this is the amazing thing, the champion can work in various different areas against various different champions. Big thumbs up, because that's just the thing. You kind of like, right? Well, I guess I can only use this in certain situations. And when like champions become have like a bleeding immune node, you know, like, oh, okay, this is where do, where do I use this champion? So hey, positive. Um, I'm glad to kind of know that about the signature ability. 
and let's move on now to the abilities as we said in game it's a little bit sparse with um well nothingness with her abilities so what has she got on offer well we have got here under soul charges max 15 stack and this is always active her life siphon which guillotine heals 2% of all damage taken by the opponent. Handy. Note all damage stacks those bleeds and watch the HP roll in. Okay, cool. Right, more bleeds, more max health got back. Each time either champion loses 5% of their max health or is inflicted with a bleed effect, gain one soul charge. The first 10 soul charges are indefinite and additional charges last 10 seconds each. Hopefully there's a synergy that kind of helps out prolonging that. Each soul charge grants... 148.92 attack rating okay that's good um added up to 20 times if you can rotate quickly and keep it on long enough morning star synergy will probably be the thing then that is going to look like what um actually it's probably, probably best like i do a, a calculator for this rather than try and guess the number 148 times 20 if indeed you can do oh no 15 sorry you can only do 15 Duh. uh one da -da, 2200 and 20 so that's the the amount there depending on star because the thing is different ratings of different style different rarity mean that uh you know um there will be better things so it'll be better uh, better better for that six stars probably gonna do more damage than a five star a 10 soul charges gear team becomes unshackled enhancing a special attack until she's back below six charges so keep those charges up more damage of the specials wait until gear team is at 10 plus charges then unleash a heavy special combo for maximum damage. So heavy attack, throw special. Easy as that. Easy as that. Sounds good. Pretty impressive. Critical hits, 35% chance to inflict a bleed debuff, causing 1,737 direct damage over 5 seconds. Chance to increase uh, by a flat 5% for each buff on the opponent. Crit rate is important for guillotine. Maximizing this stat and reliable inflicting crits means more bleeds more often. And that's going to be a bit, bit of a debatable thing as to that. Uh, in game, there is under her stat, I mean, she did have something there saying with um, critical hits, lacerate opponents with, uh, with a 50% chance, right? I mean, that is what it is, but it's not really kind of like as good as this new one. And your mastery is going to be very important as well. So make sure that you have a mastery set for the likes of uh, precision. Uh, debatable about lesser precision because you know this is all about increasing the chance synergies may be a better thing to go with in order to kind of ramp up the extent of that as quickly as possible uh so yeah that's probably that the best thing to do is just like maybe a synergy team that implements better critical rating but then that kind of like it limits you with with who you're going to choose for that but you know each to their own and we'll do a test maybe we'll do like a, a thing saying guillotine with crit rating team see what happens you know maybe that's going to be an idea for a video right back to the buff information that kabam we're going to be doing on the heavy attack side of thing 100 percent chance to inflict a 10 second bleed curse debuff an opponent with a bleed curse suffers bleed debuff causing that's a nice amount of damage to have over five seconds each time they're struck with a special attack okay so rotatable special attacks could be the thing maybe kind of charge past an sp1 close to an sp2 and go sp1 and another sp1 maybe don't know need to test and then we've got guillotines heavy attack is incredibly important don't forget to use it before launching a special attack for maximum uh damage output which you know i can see there definitely parry so parry a uh, bleed curse then do that cool okay now it and Guillotine is passively unblockable during this attack. Fantastic. That's that's really nice. And then SP1. Final hit is 100% chance to inflict a pain link debuff lasting 10 seconds while above, while active. Any non-physical damage taken by guillotine is also inflicted on the opponent as physical damage. Mm, that's sort of handy. That's sort of handy. Spend 10 souls as unshackled to apply an additional pain link debuff then when launching this attack. Nice. Okay. Dot damage got you down. Yeah, I mean, it's does this champion become the means to the end? It's a tough one, really, because then you go, would you take it against uh, something like oh, I can't remember what, what what is it now? Like so many things in this game, I can't really think. Oh, I can't remember the one that you get bleed and poison. Oh, it will come to me at the most silliest time. Um, but yeah, you'll just kind of like just use it against different things. You'll kind of like go if you're getting degen, maybe you throw it on there. Uh, you know, what have you got? 
My mind's gone completely blank. I've got wedding brain so much now. I can't even think of it. half the nodes that used to be in this this game that I'm just like going, oh, it's this node, it's this node. It's all gone. Um, when I do like a more thorough, thorough deep dive of this, I'll probably like, um, when I test a champion out, I'll probably be able to remember some of them. But that's the thing. I've got too much wedding brain on, on the moment. Everything's just kind of like, have we done this? Have we planned that? Anyway, moving on. Um, it's just handy if you're getting hit by anything. That's, that's the, the nature of it. Doesn't matter what the debuff is, if you're get if you're losing damage, degen or whatever. Special two, uh, final hit, handles a chance to spectre debuff, reducing regeneration. Yeah, Unjack would spend ten souls to pause the spectre for ten seconds more when it's first activated. Good. I mean that's nice. That's helpful. Was it ten? Hang on, let's have a look. We got we got to check whether or not like before with the champion that it was ten seconds because that's going to be a thing as well. Like have they reduced down or they nerfed it? When it comes to like the Spectre debuff. Uh, no, 10 seconds. Okay, cool. That allows it to be on for a little bit longer. Sweet. Okay, that's fine. And then SP3, which is 100% chance of the degeneration debuff, causing X amount of damage over 3 seconds. Then consume all charges to increase the duration uh, by plus 3 seconds for each soul spent this way. So if we're saying that then it's, um, what, plus extra 3 seconds. So that's what, 50. So it's fi so fifteen charges. Uh, is it fi then? Is it fifteen plus fifteen times three? Is that right? That could be, that could be that could be the case. I could be wrong with that. You know, uh, if it's 10, 30 seconds extra, I don't know. Well, like, I'll have to give it some tests really to kind of figure out this. But uh, it looks, I tell you, what, it looks pretty solid. It looks pretty good, and I don't know. Hmm. The biggest question is going to be like where Morningstar and other champions that have synergies with it come in. Because that's just the, the thing with the interaction with it. There could be some really choice and nice synergies like here. Um, soul charges take 10% longer to expire. Like is that going to be still relevant in the current state of the champion? Because if it is, Morningstar and her will be great champions for this. Because you'll get those, um, you'll keep those, those soul charges on longer which is going to be great for maximizing damage in a very quick time time frame. So that's my hope that it still retains the same. Um, but yeah, that's been a video. What are people's thoughts on this champion? Put it in the comment section down below. This looks, does look very impressive, but it does need to be tested out, especially with the rotations in order to achieve the maximum amount of damage with the bleed side of things. And as well, if you want a champion for all usages, this is going to have to be very awakened centric for those interactions as well. But there's definitely a lot of possibilities to its usage. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure as well to check out some other content that's posted on screen right now. And uh, yeah, please, please, God, I am honestly wedding brain right now. Please, I was going to say thank you very much for all the support on the channel. Uh, especially as I'm freaking out and I'm stressed about so many different things. So thanks very much for the love. I appreciate you a lot. And uh, yeah, hopefully by the end of the week I can chill a little bit. But got to get those videos made. Much love everybody. Bye-bye.